You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. At Fidelity, you'll always get a great value for your options trades. And with powerful investing tools that provide clear next steps, plus independent research and a wide range of investment types, we can help you make better trading decisions. Learn more about options trading with Fidelity at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. Hello, traders. This is your Options News Rundown for Thursday, December 27th. First up is a story from CNBC. Gold prices are rising today, helped by a weaker dollar as relief recovery in the stock market fizzled out, driving investors towards the safe haven metal. Spot gold was 0.6% higher at $1,274.50 per ounce as of 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is after hitting $1,279.06 in the previous session, its highest since June 19th. U.S. gold futures rose 0.34% to $1,277.30 per ounce. A global equity rally fueled by dramatic surge on Wall Street ran out of steam earlier today as after a fall in the Chinese industrial profits again showed the pressures on the global economy, U.S. stock markets are falling sharply after the rally yesterday. The dollar index, a gauge of the greenback's value against six major peers, fell 0.5% this morning, a sign that gold is cheaper for holders of other currencies. A partial U.S. government shutdown was widely expected to continue as after, con- after Congress reconvenes next week with lawmakers split over President Donald Trump's demand for $5 billion in taxpayer funding over a Mexican border wall. Although I'm pretty sure at some point he said several times that Mexico was going to pay for that. Uh, investor confidence in bullion was reflected in a surge in the goldings of the Spider Gold, the largest exchange traded fund. Spider Holdings rose 2.1% yesterday, the best one day percentage gain since July 2016. Next up, MarketWatch reports that U.S. stocks are giving back most of yesterday's massive rally, in which which in turn was a snapback from the worst Christmas Eve performance in history. So, how are the benchmarks performing? Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped 440 points, or almost 2%, to 22,439, while S&P 500 fell 47 points, or just under 2%, to 2420. The Nasdaq Composite was off 144 points, or 2.2%, to 6411. Yesterday, the Dow ended with gains of 1,086.2%, five points or five percent at 22,878.45. The S&P 500 soared five percent to end at 24,6770 and the Nasdaq rose by 0.8 percent to 65,5436. The Dow's rise marked its largest one day ever point rise. On a percentage basis, all three major indexes logged the strongest one day gains since March 23, 2009 and it was the best ever day after Christmas performance for equity gauges. It all comes on the heels, though, of a brutal sell-off that shor- on the shortened Christmas Eve session on Monday, which featured the lowest closes for all three indexes t- since 2017. 
Last up today, we have news from Bloomberg. An inverted yield curve may, can potentially harm U.S. economic growth and even cause a recession by pinching bank lending margins and causing a concentration in loan activity, according to a blog posted today by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. An inversion which yields when yields on short-term treasuries rise above returns on longer-term debt has preceded every U.S. recession for the past 60 years. It's not currently inverted, though the spread between the two and the 10-year treasuries has flattened. As well as being a barometer for the economy, the yield curve may actually contribute to a slowdown when inverted, according to St. Louis Fed Deputy Director of Research David Wheelock. That's because banks tend to make money from short-term borrowing at lower rates, which they'd lend at higher rates for longer periods of time. An inverted yield curve can make that business much less attractive. Drawing on findings from the Fed October 2018 Senior Loan Officer Survey, he noted that banks had viewed an inverted yield curve as a reason to tighten lending standards. Factors they cited include concern that an inversion could make lending less profitable, reduce cost tolerance among banks, and the view that it was a signal of a less favorable economic outlook. Thus, an, inv an inverted yield curve might do more to predict a recession. Might do more than predict a recession. It might actually cause one. Wheelock wrote. That's all we have for today. You can find all of these stories and more on theoptionsinsider.com. I'll be back tomorrow with more options news you can use. Thank you for listening to the Options News Rundown. To learn more about these stories or any other developments from the world of options, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for free options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in option trader education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's live Advantage Group Coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. 